Black lives cannot only matter when the bullet is discharged from the barrel of a gun being held by a police officer. Black lives must matter regardless of where those bullets are coming from. And it's time that we, as leaders in this community, wake up. I understand we all have our political interests that we have to um, be concerned with and we have to toe a line and we have to say things that are not offensive. But violence as it's happening today in Albany, in the state's capital, is beyond control. So when I started working here about four months ago, we sat down uh, in a situation very similar to this one and we said there are stories happening in this capital region and in the city of Albany that need to be told and aren't being told. One of those stories is the story of ongoing violence that is completely unaddressed seemingly by certain members of state government and, and various other stakeholders in the community. And it's concerning because it primarily is affecting one group more than any other. Who is that group? Well, that, that group are young, black and brown, uh, what I would consider children, that, that live in a very concentrated uh, part of our community. And the tragedies that are occurring in this community, they're just never discussed. So the people affected by this increase in crime, once again, are people of color. The people of color that are, are generally used as a leverage point when trying to get basically any piece of legislation passed. And I say all that to say, what happened this summer? And one thing that really sticks out to me is six people being shot in one instance and the circular nature of violence. But what happened this summer in your estimation as far as violent crime goes? This, in the summer of 2022, specifically in the month of August, we experienced the most violent uh, moment in the history of, of this county. I haven't seen anything like this. Um, to the extent that there were about 20 people that, uh, that, that went to our emergency rooms with bullet holes in their body. 20 people alone in the month of August. Um, the, the, other troubling, the other troubling issue is we had two mass shooting events. We had a mass shooting at the beginning of, of August where six people were shot in a drive-by and we had uh, another one towards the end of August um, that uh, paralyzed, I believe, two people. And it's time that we, as leaders in this community, wake up. I understand we all have our political interests that we have to um, be concerned with and we have to toe a line and we have to say things that are not offensive. But violence as it's happening today in Albany, in the state's capital, is beyond control. And one of the ways that we can begin to rein it back in is to review these reforms that have been passed. And the one that comes to mind now is specifically raise the age. The failure of raise the age is not that it's failed to achieve the goals and the legislative the legislature's intent, but it's also failing the very population of youth that it was intended to help. That incident at the end of August, where the U Albany kids also were around that general area, that incident specifically had raised the age implications because on either side you had obviously they're, they're anonymous due to their age people who had run-ins with the criminal justice system, people who had run-ins with the justice system related to firearms on either side. So when you return people to a community, you're not just returning them and nothing happens. There's somebody that they may have shot at or targeted who is now going to come back after them. And it is a circular unit as far as retaliatory violence. It seems that those who draft said legislation don't necessarily have a concept of how the streets work and a fundamental knowledge of the hood is probably helpful. Well, this is, this is precisely the, the reason that I asked the question of our legislators uh, when all of these issues were being discussed. It's like, do you understand how crime works? Do you understand how certain communities work? Throughout my career in this office, when we've had people on the streets carrying illegal weapons. Those individuals are carrying illegal weapons because they are shooters. Today, shooters is tomorrow's victim of a shooting. And therefore, one of the reasons that we used to target weapons so aggressively in the city 
is we wanted to remove that individual from community and incapacitate them so that not only would they not be shooting, but they also would not be shot at. It's just remarkable that we're not talking about this louder than we are now mm -hmm. and that we continue to accept absurd sound bites about what's happening in other communities to explain what's happening here and yet not having a solution for here. Now, I, I, before we move on any further, mm -hmm. I, I would also say that it's not just a mere um, retooling, a revisiting of, of poor legislation that was drafted. It's investment. It's significant investment in community because um, reforming the reforms alone isn't going to fix the issues. As you say, uh, this office has seen a lot. Um, we've invested a lot in young people, and we know, as Frederick Douglass said uh, in the past, that it's easier to raise strong children than to repair broken men. That's, a, that's not just a, one of the best things that's ever been said by one of the greatest orders in our, in our uh, lifetime. Um, it's just profoundly true. It's profoundly true. Mm -hmm. And yet, year after year, we continue to return for session, and we try to um, outsmart that which we already know, mm -hmm. that it requires investment in kids and in communities. It's no coincidence that the very community that the legislators intended to benefit are also the same communities that are currently experiencing the highest rates of violence that we've ever seen in this state. So that investment that you're talking about here is not just monetary. That investment is holistic in that it is also cultural. And what I mean by that is when we have these, for example, we do felony youth diversion here. Something that is always emphasized is the personal responsibility of the individual who is involved. So if you are going to try to prevent the broken men that we have walking around right now, you have to have an understanding about what the circumstances of the children, like the ones we saw at Albany High earlier this year. There is nothing that is going to cripple your economy. There is nothing that will, that will uh, drag uh, down a community, tighten and anchor around that community more so than violence. It just so happens that most of these events are taking place in the same places and spaces that we have the most poverty, right? that we have uh, the most housing, the number of housing issues, um, the same issues where we're having academic issues, because violence impacts everything. And, and, and so I, what, was, what was the most profound, um, uh, I, I think, uh, experience for me as a, as a prosecutor here in Albany County was the fact that those incidents fell on deaf ears. Um, and I, I would like to, to, to use the example of Buffalo, right? When, when, when the mass shooting occurred in, in Buffalo, I think uh, the nation tuned in. And um, our legislatures uh, couldn't get to Albany fast enough to draft legislation that they felt were appropriate to address the, the randomness of, of, of that violent uh, attack that had a whole host of, of racist connotations associated with the attack. And yet, we had two mass shooting events in Albany that occurred in the same community where mass shooting events continue to happen with frequency, and there is silence. There is silence. It's as if the black and brown community has been forsaken. Or I should say, the black and brown community, when it comes to victims of crime, they've been forsaken. And there's a reason why citizens and, and communities that are, that are enjoying you know, their peace, there's a reason for them to be concerned is because these issues are not contained. You can't contain them to the 75 blocks in the city of Albany. They eventually will bleed out into different communities. You know, we have malls in the area. We've seen two incidents um, in the last, you know, 18 months that involve violence happening at the malls. Black lives cannot only matter when the bullet is discharged from the barrel of a gun being held by a police officer. Black lives must matter regardless of where those bullets are coming from. 